Point Loma and it's sunny down here, but there's a family who desperately need my help. So why don't we take a look? Hi, we're, we're the, the Mann family, family from San, San Diego, Diego, California. I'm Melissa. And I'm Mark. We have four children. Naomi, who's five. And the triplets, who are three years old. Nathaniel. Madeline. And Nora. I'm a nurse midwife, and I work two to three days a week. My job is at a local university. You have got to be kidding me. Naomi was, from birth, a challenging baby. Mimi. She's very difficult to try to rationalize with. It's really like dealing with a two- or three-year-old. This little girl, she needs some discipline. When Naomi doesn't get her way, it's extremely unpredictable. She becomes unmanageable. She's the mistress of mayhem in our family in many, many ways. Naomi? Fine, I quit. The triplets came along about two years after Naomi. We needed to use some reproductive technologies. In vitro fertilization. So we were really praying and trusting for one more child. There's only a 30% chance with in vitro fertilization of even having one child. Having triplets is extremely rare, something like 3 or 4%. We just never imagined that it happened to us. Why are there chicken nuggets upstairs? Naomi's behavior and attitude really goes back to that time when the triplets were born. It's a common thread that runs through all of our kids is feeling left out. They all want mum's attention. Only one mum. If I ask you again, to go to your room, you're getting a paddle. Get back in the crib, Daddy. or I'm going to paddle your hiney. <laughs> we happened to go to a uh, church children's seminar on discipline, and it was advocated that we use paddling. <laughs> Not good. We found initially it worked very well for us. You're getting a paddle when I come no. upstairs. <laughs> I love you, buddy. I'm so sorry. I forgive you. This really isn't right. I mean, you're smacking a kid and then you're hugging him at the same time. What? Overall, it's not working for us. If you get out of your crib, I'm going to paddle you. No, Nora, please come bring me the knife. I think. I find it really, really overwhelming to have all four kids by myself. Wait, 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 wait. Come back here. Hurry. Madeline? Madeline, uh, Madeline, uh, listen to me. You never uh, walk. Nora, Nora. I find myself really struggling not to check out. And there have been numerous occasions over the last two months that I have just wanted to disappear. Wait, Nora. Where'd Nora go? Madeline, Madeline, Madeline. Come on, Naomi, Naomi, Naomi. I have felt downright desperate. I hope Mark gets more confidence in his ability to be with all four children by himself. We really need to turn things around. Super Nanny, please come soon. We need your help. Guys, you need my help. I'm on my way. Hello. Hi, welcome to Hi. the Nanny home. Pleased to meet you. Please come on in and meet the family. This is Nora. Thank you. She's one Just of the triplets. In. Hi, Super Nanny. Hello. Welcome. Oh, you're pleased to meet you. Please Hi, Joe. You. And you're Nathaniel, huh? Hi, Naomi. Pleased to meet you. Hi, Madeline. I was so excited when Joe first arrived at our home. She really is a gift from God to our family. Nora, come and Bye. sit down right now. It wasn't long before I started to be in the middle of a lot of mayhem. If I ask you again, you're going to go upstairs to your crib. Mum was putting Nora in the crib to do discipline, and every time she walked out of the bedroom, Nora would jump out. What did I say? I said if you got out of your crib, you were going to get a paddle. I love you, but you disobeyed. If you get out of your crib, you're going to get a paddle. What's a paddle? A paddle is wax on their honey. 
with a wooden spoon. That's what I saw on the tape, right? The submission tape. Yeah. So that you've still got that one. Well, they've all broken. How? And sometimes Mark has broken it on the tabletop <laughs> in anger afterward. So do any spoons exist in your house at the moment? A wooden fork. A wooden fork. Right, OK, so it's the spoons are broke and now we've got the wooden fork. Right, OK. Nora Elizabeth, what did Mama tell you? I said if you got out again, you were going to get a paddle. I love you, but you may not disobey Mama. <laughs> Mama, Mama. Now you stay in your crib. <laughs> you may give me a hug. I love you. <laughs> I mean, what's going on? One minute, Mum's spanking the kids. The next minute, she's hugging and kissing them. I mean, this is really mixed messages. Joe saw me uh, discipline Nora. It was difficult. I hate to have to use physical force to have the children obey me. This is rest time. I must take a nap. Naomi. Don't miss my bed. Don't mess it. Don't mess my bed. Do not speak to mommy that you way. You messed it up. You messed it up. Come and get up on your bed. It's no. time for a nap. No. <laughs> Naomi. You may not talk to me that way. I'm not taking. If you get out, out of your bed. And when Naomi has a temper tantrum, it is a serious wobbly. Mean and nasty and rude. Yeah. <laughs> you may not speak to me that way. That is disrespectful talk. You don't allow me. You may me. not speak to mommy in that way. You may read a book. No, you read you me get, a book. If you get down. Read me a book. You don't speak to me that way. Read me a book. How do you ask for someone to read? Read me, read me a book. Naomi bullies them to the point where they end up giving in to her. Mum's really had enough of this rude attitude and I wanted to hear her voice, so I took her downstairs where we could have a private chat. Tell me really how you feel when Naomi's kicking off and she's looking at you and she's talking to you like that. I want to smack her across the mouth. And say what? How dare you talk to me that way? You may not speak to me that way. I'm your mother. I feel like I could be violent with her, and at times I have. I've t at times I've taken her by the back of the neck and I've walked her up the stairs and I've pushed her onto her bed and I've closed the door and I you stay there until I come up and get you. Did you just feel like... I'm just totally exasperated. I don't like her. Mm -hmm. I don't want her in my house. Mm -hmm. I don't want her around my children, mm -hmm. my other children. To hear that just sent shivers down my spine. It's an awful situation. As a mother, you're looking at your daughter and you don't even like her. Go back to your room. Go back to your room, Naomi. After watching Mum, it was time for me to take a closer look at Dad, and I learned a lot. I do for... <laughs> Now you've hurt your brother because you were throwing a tantrum and throwing yourself out. Ow! You mean. You can stay right here for five minutes. I will be back. Me. Go back. Get no. on. Go back and get on the bed. No. I want you to go back and no. sit on the bed for a couple minutes. No. <laughs> You're gonna sit on the bed. No. Naomi. No. I need your different behavior. No. I could clearly see Dad's pattern. When he gets overwhelmed, he just checks out. He's feeling really strained. He's got triplets and a five-year-old, and it's not going to go away. There have been many times in the last couple of months when I have felt so overwhelmed. I thought I could handle anything, and I have felt broken. I hadn't seen Mum and Dad work as a team, so the opportunity to go to the beach would give me just that. Mark, I need help. She can't go out far. Naomi, the undertow by here is so strong. I know. We should go over by the lifeguard. Whoa! Woo! Ah! A lack of organization for mum and dad meant that nobody had a good time at the beach. We're done. <laughs> well, no, we're, we're just letting them go out too I know, far. but you know what? We should be over by the lifeguard. No, oh, Melissa. <sighs> Let's go. <laughs> Look, the kids are actually having fun. You want to take them away already? Yes, I'm ready to go, please. 
Come on, Madeline, let's go. I know you're having fun, but we got to go. They got to the shower area, and that was even worse. Both parents were stressed out. You could see Dad was beside himself. Let me put your shoes on. They were struggling to get all the kids together. The kids weren't listening. Daniel, come out of the street. Come, go to Mommy Trust right now. Trust and obey. Ow. Trust and obey. Mark, Mommy. you got to pick her up and move along. Please. Thank you. When I fell down and Joe came to my rescue, it was like, OK, where's Mark again? You got to pick up just, the phone. Just, just but a lot. At times, you had one kid. And I, I was I, like, what are you doing? I had three kids up sitting waiting. And I don't know what you were doing. I was walking with her at her pace. Yeah, but it's not at her pace. OK, just tell me, hon. I'm telling you now, honey. Thank you. We seriously need to work on a game plan for these parents for the safety of the kids. Everybody ready for light to go off? One, two, three. It's been a very stressful day for this family. Get back in your bed. And bedtime was no different. I need to go party. I need to go party. Right. The triplets didn't want to settle, and Naomi wanted a bandage. I'm not going to wrap it all up, but I'll put a loose bandage on. But that, you won't put medicine on it. It doesn't need medicine. It will stick. Do you trust me? No, I don't. I don't trust you. I'm never going to trust you. Do you know why she might feel that way? I don't. If I see you getting up, now you lie down, too. Good night. I'll go get you, Ben, OK? Yes, again, Naomi was browbeating her mum until she got her own way. I can feel the medicine. She rolls me, eventually. I give in. Okay. I win, I win, I win. I always win again. I've had a full day in the Mann family household, and I feel that there are so many issues that need to be addressed in this family. They have given in to their children, and it's totally unhealthy, and it's not teaching their children anything. Joe's here to assess the situation and take control of it and whip us into shape. That, that's scary we're going to get paddled. You're going to be gentle, right? Sorry? <clears throat> You're going to be gentle? I'm going to be truthful. So the first thing I want to talk about is discipline. Your messages are mixed. Mm -hmm. You know, up, upstairs with, with Nora, you spanked her and, and cuddled her at the same time. How messed up is that? I'm sorry, I don't agree with it. I know it's an old school of thinking, and I know it's what people did, but it's not necessary. Continue it, you can break a child's spirit. So something drastically has to change, and we have to put measures in that allow us how to be able to discipline properly. Mark, let's talk about your situation. You and I discussed about you feeling overwhelmed and challenged with looking after the kids. I hear you. It's a huge responsibility. And I know that you feel desperate, and I know it's because you don't have the tools, but you then start to withdraw. It's like you're here, but you're not switched on. And I know you can see that. There has to be a place where you accept your family, where you start to let your hair down and really enjoy fatherhood. But I didn't see that. There was about 10 minutes that I actually enjoyed being out yesterday. And, and I saw that, but it shouldn't take that. Yeah. We shouldn't need the water, the beach, the sunset yeah. to have that. I hear you, and I want to learn the tools from you. So, Melissa, what's going on between yourself and Naomi isn't good. Mm. She pushes your buttons, and you allow her, and then you blame her for it and that leaves you in a place where you respond to her in a, in a way that's very hostile, not healthy at all. The behaviour that she shows when she's angry is your behaviour. She's just mimicking your behaviour. And your messages are mixed. Mm -hmm. You spanked her, and then you'll tell her no, and then you give in anyway. It's important for us to discipline, yet reassure our children that we love them. And it's the things that we do that builds that. 
But right now, everything's so mixed. Everything's so confusing. And that shows me that it's very confusing up here in your mind, because nothing's black and white for the kids. They haven't got a clue. You're confusing them even more. And it's ugly. It's ugly on the outside. And this is what's going to be important to change. Let's talk about bedtime. We could do with much work there. I can certainly teach you techniques to get them in their beds and staying in their beds as part of that sleeping process. Great. Got a lot on your plate. I understand that. It's hard work. I just need two parents that are on board to want to do that. I'm on board. We're on board. All right, so we're in. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Both mum and dad have got their own parenting issues, but it's compounded when they don't work together. All right, and we... So what I'm going to do is to take them both out of their comfort zone and teach them individually, and then I'm going to bring them both back together. So discipline no. is one warning. The first thing I want to tackle is mum and discipline. Out with the old and in with the new technique. Naomi. 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 Naomi, please come upstairs. No. And when Naomi started to play up, it was time for Mum's first lesson. You're going to give her eye contact, you're going to come down to her level, and in a very firm voice, you're going to say to her, I asked you to listen and do as you're told. I asked you to come up here, and you disobeyed me. The next time you don't obey me, you're going to go straight to the naughty bench. Do you understand? Do you yeah. understand? OK, let go of her hand. OK. And then I showed her where the naughty spot would be. You place them onto the bench. They'll stay there one minute per their age. So five minutes, three minutes, and then you walk away. Now all mum and dad needed was practice, and Naomi obliged. Naomi, you're not Naomi. sitting in your chair. Uh, no, she's not. She's about to do a timeout. Yep, because I told her not to do that again. Yep, she goes into timeout, and she'll have to resume back at the table. Sit down. Sit down and explain. <laughs> You're in timeout, Naomi, because Mom, we asked you. Mom, where's your voice? You? Where's, that, where's that voice? We asked you to sit at the table. They didn't want me to get so You're day. here for five minutes. And Naomi just freaked out. <laughs> when Naomi was on the naughty bench and she was just screaming and throwing such a fit, I wasn't surprised by it, but I, at the same time, I was just humiliated that I have been such a large contributor to this very behavior. Mommy, Mom, you don't give me meaning. You're not my grandma, and you're not my mother. Only yesterday in this situation, Mum would have resorted to spanking. You're and stingy, Mom. The words are there to manipulate and to emotionally blackmail and to pull the strings that they've been pulling for far too long because you've allowed it. You've got to let it go over your head. You can't take it personally. Eventually, Naomi did calm down and it gave Mum the opportunity to finish the time out. Naomi, you are here because you disobeyed. Sorry, Mum. It was hard work, but it was really also encouraging. It felt empowering to finally do it in a way that was really going to make a difference. Now that I think that Mum's got discipline safely underneath her belt, it's time to work with Dad. I've got one T-shirt. So it's yours. We're going to wave goodbye to you. And you and I are going to work. Dad really needs to learn how to manage all four kids by himself. And in order to do that, yeah. Mum's got to go away. And he's going to learn to be more capable and confident in looking after his children. Who wants to go to the park and play? No. That's what I've had the most anxiety about doing. Wait, wait, wait. Everybody wait. Madeline's shoe. OK, you two wait right here. Out of the door. This button. Nathaniel. Nathaniel and Nora, wait. Everybody wait. OK, now we're going to walk across the path here, and we're going to go to the playground. We're all, do we, wait, 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 wait. Hey, 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 hey. Look at this. We have to look both ways. Look to the left. Are there oh. any cars? Nora. Nora. Nora, wait, wait. 
at this stage, when you've got two and two, you now need to be in the middle, OK? OK, we're going to cross then. Once they got to the little playground area, Dad got busy just having fun with the kids. <laughs> I certainly think it's challenging for him. I think he's stepped up. I do believe that he can do this. I think he needs to believe that and know it. I got you. Mark, let's uh, round the kids up. Hey, listen, everybody, come here. And as we started to walk back, Naomi kicked off. She decided that she was going to go and do her own thing like a big grown-up woman. And Dad started to walk off. Mark, right from here, because you have three here, I want you to turn around in a very firm voice and say to Naomi, you need to come here right now, Naomi, because if you do not listen to Daddy, you are going to be in trouble later. Do you understand? OK. Now, Naomi, you need to come here right now or you're going to be in big trouble when we get back home. Thank you very much. Now sit down on the bench. That's the first time that I saw Dad exercise his tone of voice out in public and Naomi respond. You talk with such conviction that they take you seriously. They know you're not messing around. That was really encouraging. That was maybe the single most empowering experience for me. Everybody walk. Good job. It was time to have lunch, and Dad had made chicken sandwich and fruit, and Naomi dug her heels in. No, I'm not eating it. Naomi wasn't going to back down, and she wanted her dad to give in. And you just really can't. So it really was a case of pushing through this with Dad and having him in a place where he just felt strong enough to be able to continue with Naomi throughout all her temper tantrums. <laughs> Nora started to kick off. There was timeouts, then back at the table again. I mean, this went on for hours. <laughs> I don't have enough fingers and toes to, to count the number of timeouts that I did today. But I tell you what, he's stuck in there. We needed to stay strong with Naomi and let her realize that she had to do as she was told. And eventually, she ate that sandwich. The hardest thing for me is to see how out of control Naomi is. I want my own mommy back and my own daddy. I think it was a, a very valuable exercise for Dad. However, the real, real practice is going to be when I'm gone and having Dad do that exercise when I'm not around. I've worked with these parents individually, but now it's time for me to bring them together and see how they work as a team. And I don't think it's going to be that easy. Communication and organisation is key for mum and dad, so I brought in a list with the most important thing at the top. Two kids per parent. So between the pair of you, you will decide who is going to take care of who. So this example here is for the beach because that's where we are going to go. Mum and dad will be responsible for working together as a team and completing everything on that list. No, mummy's packing that. May I have it, please? But the fact is, it takes a lot of hard work to manage four kids and get them out of the house. No, no, that is mommy's. Give me. Naomi, put yes. your dress on. And then it goes back. Mark, yeah, I would like for you to take everybody down, have them go to the bathroom. Are we taking Mark. our van? Yes. OK, because there's a red van. That's... Mark, Mark, in order for mum to feel like you're working with her, she said, look, you know what, Let, let's do this. And as soon as you go off on a tangent about something else, she's like, all right, are we going to do it? So if you both team tag together and you get that done next, then you can throw the next thing in. Nora, okay. you're not listening, like loving. When mum and dad worked together and took a task each, everything got a lot easier. Uh, so, check. Got a comb or a brush? Comb. Well, listen, before we go, who's going to have which kids? It's up to you. I... I've got Naomi and Madeline. Hey. I have this Daniel and Nora. OK. Bingo. Oh. We still need a bathing suit. Yep. And here's their easy clothes. They could just put these dresses on. OK, we're ready. We're ready? You're ready. Now they were prepared, it meant that half the battle was won. Whether Dad could step up and Mum could relax would be yet to be seen. Go on down to the beach, babe. Mark, I'm going to go sit with Daniel for a minute. OK. I'll watch the girls. Oh! You OK? Daddy's got you. Mum and Dad are working with one another. 
And that actually makes this experience beautiful for the whole family. Hi, Boo. We've got three now. I Stand with her. Oh, hey, Mark. Can I have a wait? Okay. Being on the same page was helpful. <laughs> now I feel like we can actually go out and enjoy a lot more of our life. We can actually enjoy each other while we're being with the kids, and that feels really good. OK, everybody. Mum and Dad did really well at the beach. I mean, they enjoyed themselves as a family. However, the real test is going to come when I'm gone. Next, it was time to tackle another problem together. Bedtime. Come on, Mad, let's get your cosy jammies on. Bedtime's a nightmare in this house because the triplets and Naomi refuse to settle down. I don't trust you. Using a crib for a timeout is wrong. And the triplets have outgrown their cribs anyway. So I gave the children brand new beds and I put Nora and Madeline in one room and Naomi and Nathaniel in the other. Once you've put the kids to bed, hugs and kisses, and they've had their stories, I would like you to come out of their bedrooms and leave their door ajar and come downstairs. If they want you, what they will do is come out of the bedroom and come down to find you. We'll see how it goes tonight. This is your first night in your big bed. And sure enough, separating the kids had an immediate effect because Madeline and Nora fell asleep straight away. The next job, however, was keeping Naomi and Nathaniel in their own bedroom. Sorry, I'm turning the light, light off. No, 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 I don't like you. Good night. I don't like you. Good night. I don't Good like you. Good night. All the kids are in their bedrooms. If they come out, we start the stay in bed technique. Dad, you're going to start the first step if Naomi comes down, OK? You're going to just go, it's bedtime, darling, and place her back, OK? Stay right here. No, I'm going to sit downstairs okay. with Mommy. I'm not going to sleep. Lie down. Nathaniel, it's bedtime, sweetie. All right, don't let her reel you in. You know Naomi does that. We don't yeah. want that. Yeah. Never mind about Nathaniel. It's just when she comes out that you deal with her correctly. It's time to go to bed. But I really want to. It's time to go to bed, honey. OK, you're on, you're on your third, which is no communication. and Just gently put her back into bed. Daddy. You're bad, Daddy. You are. Yet again, we are seeing Naomi give her parents a run for their money, and it's because she won't accept what they're saying, so she wants to be able to control it. I hate you, Daddy. What's the longest this has ever gone on for you? Oh, probably about four hours. <laughs> You're mean. You are. I'm hungry. I'm tired. There's monsters. I need something to drink. I need to go potty. You know, it will get every excuse in the book. We're at two hours. Go on, Mark. Go check Go out. and check. Victory, you guys have just done the Good. sleeping technique with four kids. And then they're in beds. You should be really proud of yourselves. You have helped Can us. Can I tell you what the biggest miracle things. has been tonight for me is I never got upset once. It's amazing what you can do, right? <sighs> It feels really good not to need the spoon anymore, especially with Naomi. I am going for several days. The pair of you nip the behavior in the bud. Keep you calm with Naomi. Understand that it's changed for her as well. In saying that, I'm off. OK. It's kind of scary, because it's really been nice having Joe there as a safety net. But it's also really good, because I feel like we both have a new sense of confidence. Have a great couple days. Thank you. You too. Enjoy it. Thank Enjoy. You. I'm not ready for her to leave. I'm a little nervous that I'm not going to be able to pull it off the next couple of days. It's going to be difficult for them. But if they can come together and talk to one another, then I think they should do pretty well. I 
I've been away for several days. I hope that Mr. Wooden Spoon hasn't crept back into the house. OK, so the first clip we're going to take a look at, Mark and Naomi. Time out. my bed. You don't if it's your bed, come on. You've got to come down right now. No, she's not. You. All right, you're going into You're going into timeout. You don't pinch me on my face like that. Come on. I need to put these back. I will put them back. No, I know. Come on. We're in timeout because you pinched me and hit me and because you yelled at me. I'm just going to leave her up in the closet. And when she's had enough, she'll come down and then she'll have her timeout. I'm not for five minutes. Using mean words, hitting and kicking, okay? Five minutes. <laughs> Tell me why you were in timeout. <laughs> what else did you do? <laughs> yeah, you did the right thing in that circumstance completely. She came down. I knew that she would have to sit on that timeout, and she actually put herself on it. Mm -hmm. And then you continued with the discipline, which was important. Yeah. So this was very good to see. All right. Dad on the job. Who wants to go to Kid Ventures? Me, I, I do. Naomi, I told you you have to hold his hand. I want Maddie. No, Maddie, you're going to hold Nora's finger. Why? Because this is what I said. You can hold Naomi's hand when we get inside. No. Nathaniel, Madeline, and Nora, wait, stop. No. Stop. Naomi, stop. Naomi, stop. Naomi, keep me. We're going to stay together in here, OK? Look at the dinosaur, huh? Ooh, you hear him growling? <laughs> oh, I'm a pirate shark. Stay right with me. Stay right with me. Good job. Hey. Tell me the difference between you not so long ago and you now? I have a totally different sense of confidence. Um, the kids are listening to me. In the past, if I ever did anything with them, it was kind of corralling them by yelling at them. What would you say to another father who was in your shoes and who felt that the only way to control a situation was to smack and get out a wooden spoon? Seriously. I'd say you can make the change. Things can be different. It's a 180. It is. It's a total 180 from where I was. Thank you. So let's move on to the next one, Mum and Naomi. Ooh, here we go. I don't like you, Mom. Naomi, those are mean words. You had a warning. You, I hate you. I love you. I don't want to listen to any of your words. OK. I hate you every day, and I really hate you. Uh, Her words just go right to my core. Because she knows that she always got a reaction from you when she used those words, that was her way of getting your attention. And you've got to learn to be able to go like this. When she used to say things to you, you would get angry and you would shout and you would yell and smack her. Mm. How are you feeling with regards to Naomi? In the beginning, you had quite harsh things to say. I just feel like... There's much to be done, and I just realize that I have a lot of work there to do. We will need to work on this relationship because I believe there's much healing to be done there. I think that we are certainly on the road of doing that with a pair of you. So let's move on to the next phase. Whew. I know Mark feels really overwhelmed, but he's not alone. I mean, at last count, 6,000 sets of triplets were born every year in the USA. There's so many groups out there that cater towards mums and their experiences with their children. But what about the dads? What about the guys who changed the diapers? So I took dad out to meet up with a couple of other guys who are the fathers of triplets, who understand exactly what he's going through. So how are things going? Um, you mean this week or overall? <laughs> or today? 
having kids in a family changes the marriage, and having yeah. triplets really changes the marriage. Once we had the kids, everything was focused on the kids. So we go out to dinner, we actually went out to, <laughs> to our anniversary dinner, and we're sitting there, and we're like, so I wonder how the kids are doing. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we, we should actually yeah. call them right now. Yeah. It was really good and hopeful for me to see, you know, three other dads who've been through everything that I've been through. I often will, uh, when I get, get the chance, I gotta run errands or something, I'll take one of the kids with me just so I can have some one-on-one -on -one time. How do you deal with that sense of guilt at what you're not giving to the, uh, to the others when you're investing in the one? Triplets are a little pod of people and they move around as a group. And if you take one out and say, hey, let's go, let's go to the grocery store together, that my kids love it. I, I, we take turns doing it. I don't think it's a feeling of guilt. I don't feel guilty about it. I think it's, it's fun one-on-one -on -one time. There, there's sort of the group dynamic in the house. I think when you take them out individually, it's a different thing. They kind of yeah. assert their individuality. Like I had one son the other day, we were going to the store. I was going, he goes, hey, can I go to the store? I'm like, yeah, sure, come with. He's like, I love you, Dad. You know, like, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this gets to happen. And I, I think to see their enthusiasm and, and their kind of zest for being fathers of their kids, I think was really good for me. So is there an official network? How did you guys meet each other? There is, the you, more the merrier. The more the merrier. It's like 60 families, I think, involved. In fact, next Tuesday, there's a big get together at a restaurant. You should go. What wow. Do you think? Joe, that's amazing. It was really cool that there's a network already existing of people who face the same kind of issues that we do. And so Tuesday, we're going. No, but seriously, thank you so much. I think the meeting went really well. I mean, they all enjoyed themselves. And it's nice to know that when Mark feels overwhelmed, he has a place to go. Blessings. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. The fact is that Naomi and her mother's relationship is still strained. And I see it as one last chance, really, to bring them closer together. And Perch here, before I came, you wasn't very happy, was you, with Mummy? But sometimes Mummy wasn't very happy with you, was she? But yeah, that's right. What I want to do is actually present you with this book. It says, Mum and Naomi, show and share. So, Naomi, you need to find something that you want to show Mummy and share with her what you think about it or how it makes you feel. And what do you talk like about, about it. it? Yeah, all of that, OK? The point of the show and share is to get both Mum and Naomi to emotionally become more intimate with one another so they can share their memories and enjoy those experiences. And this is my fifth birthday. Tell Mummy about your fifth birthday and why it's special. It was fun. We went to the jumpy thing. And we jumped and then we went to a place and we ate there. It's a nice moment when you see mother and daughter talking about the good times that they've had. We went to the Syracuse Zoo in New York and we had popsicles and there's that picture. That's us at that celebration. And it was just mommy and you. Thank you the zoo. I'd love for you to draw the zoo. I would really like Melissa and Naomi to do the show and share every week because if they do this, they're gonna become a lot closer together and they're gonna have happier feelings because their experiences are gonna be happier. I'm so excited about my future with Naomi. I feel like Joe has helped me to really turn a 180 in my approach to Naomi. That's me and my mommy looking at the peacock. <laughs> so it is. Bye. 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 The changes I saw in the children are the changes that I live for when I teach families. These kids are three and five. They are going to squabble, but that's the journey. Joe, we can't begin to express how thankful and grateful we are for everything that you've given to us. I feel like we're starting on a new path. It's bright, and it has so much possibility. Thank you. No, thank, thank you. you. This has been a transforming week for us, and we have a lot to really feel good about. Um, <laughs> I am going home. Having Joe here has really empowered me and giving me hope that I can become the kind of parent that I'm supposed to be. Keep in touch. You too, Joe. Naomi. It was very hard to say goodbye to Joe. You take care. Listen, listen, listen. You are going to be OK. You know that, right? I do. She's given me faith in myself. You know, she's definitely changed my life. And she's changed my family. I'm just very grateful.